Worldwide, there is an estimated 236,000 deaths a year due to drowning, making it the world's third leading killer due to unintentional injuries behind falls and motor vehicle accidents. Drowning affects all New Zealanders irrespective of age, ethnicity, gender or social economic status. In New Zealand, approximately 80 people a year die in drownings, with half of those at beaches and rivers. Almost 90% of the patients are male and most die due to unintentional immersion incidents while swimming, boating, diving or offshore activities. It is consistently the third highest cause of unintentional death in New Zealand, surpassed only by road vehicle crashes and accidental falls. Drowning is officially defined as the process of experiencing respiratory impairment from submersion or immersion in liquid. Terms like dry drowning or near drowning are medically inaccurate and should not be used. There are only two terms a surf lifeguard should use, non-fatal drowning or fatal drowning. So, how does drowning happen? When water enters the airway, it triggers coughing. The patient may try to hold their breath to prevent further water entry, or the muscles of the voice box, the larynx, may spasm and close on their own to prevent entry of more water. Both reflexes usually end and water is breathed or aspirated into the lungs. Breathing in as little as 50 to 250 mils of water washes away the lungs surfactant layer, a soapy-like bubble film that holds the air sacs open. When these air sacs collapse, the lungs lose their ability to put fresh oxygen into the blood. Whatever oxygen is in the blood is quickly used up and oxygen levels drop as the heart races under an adrenaline surge. Within a minute the patient usually loses consciousness due to low blood oxygen levels called hypoxia and further breathing attempts stop. This is respiratory arrest. After five minutes brain injury is usually permanent. After 10 minutes death is the likely outcome. How does the heart react? The heart is much more resistant to a lack of oxygen than the fragile brain, but after 10 minutes it is beating so slowly and irregularly that there is no more pulse or blood pressure. Circulation has now stopped. Eventually the heart may quiver or fibrillate. During this time shocks from a defibrillator AED, may be able to restart the heart. Rescue breathing or ventilations could put air into the lungs and chest compressions could circulate that oxygen throughout the body in a best case scenario. If untreated, the heart develops an unshockable rhythm and eventually stops all electrical activity, usually within 20 minutes. At this point, in almost every case, even with the best CPR, the patient's heart will not regain an output. They will have had a fatal drowning. While there are extremely rare exceptions, usually small children who've fallen into near freezing water, the vast majority do not survive submersion for longer than five minutes. Of course, we don't know who will survive ahead of time, so we give every patient the best chance possible to survive through effective and quick CPR. What should a surf lifeguard do in a drowning situation? The focus is on getting to the patient and starting rescue ventilations within the first few minutes of submersion. If they've stopped breathing, but their heart is still beating, meaning respiratory arrest, their chance of survival is much higher than if they go on to develop cardiac arrest. Getting to them quickly with early ventilations and CPR is critical.